you are welcome to Math Demystified. Okay. Good everyone. I'm making this video to help the junior students to learn how to change subjects of formulae. So this is an introduction to change of subject or formulae. So we are going to make X the subject of the given equations. So let's start with the first one. So number one, I have X plus y equals c. So I want to make x the subject of the formula. Now you will see that when you make something the subject of the formula, that thing must stand alone on one part of the equation while other things will move to the other side. So I want to make x the subject. So something is attached to x and it's positive. So you use the reverse of positive, which is minus, to take care of this. So that will be subtract the y from this side and subtract the y from the other side too. This, we cancel this. We have made x the subject of the formula. And it's as simple as that. Similarly, if I give you number two, and I say x minus y equals c, you will see that something is subtracted from x that I'm looking for. So the reverse or the opposite of this is plus y. So I'll do that to both sides. So this will cancel this. So my x is now equal to c plus y. Now, one other thing you need to also note is that anything you are looking for must be a positive number. So if I ask you to find something and that thing is not positive, it is advisable that you make it positive before you even start. For example, number three, if I have y minus x equals p, y minus x equals p. You see, I'm looking for x and the x I'm looking for happen to be a negative number. And I've told you that whatever you are looking for must be a positive number. So take care of this. And that will be y minus x plus x, which is p plus x. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side because of the equality sign. So this, we take care of this and make you have y equals p plus x. You will see that the x has become positive right now. So you are free to now take care of this. This one too is a positive number. The sign here is positive. When nothing is written, the sign is positive. So right here we have positive. So take care of this P. I'll use the reverse of it, which is minus P, to take care of it. So minus P plus P plus X, so that this can take care of this. So in the end, my X is now equal to Y minus P y minus p. That's the best way and faster way of doing it. If you decide to move this one to the other side, you still get the answer, but it could be a bit tricky. A bit tricky. Let me solve it the other way. Or somebody may just say y minus x equals p and say, I want to move this one. You know, I said, whatever you're looking for must be a positive number. That's why I did what I did here. But somebody may just say, I want to move this one. So if you are moving this one, you're going to have y, you know it's a positive number, minus y, minus x is here, equals p minus y. I separated y from it. So this has cancelled this. And that leaves me with this equals p minus y. Can you see that? Now, this minus x you have here simply means minus 1x. That's what it means. So for me to have... A positive value there, I would divide 
both sides by minus one so that I'll have minus x over minus one, which is equal to p minus y, everything over minus one. This will cancel this. So I have x, and x is not a positive value. So, but you are not advised to leave your answer like this because generally in mathematics, we don't like negative values to be in the denominator. So let's take this denominator and divide each of these values. So that will give us p over minus one, then minus y over minus one. Now, positive divided by negative is negative. So x is equal to minus p. And this one, positive divided by positive is positive. And you will see that this value here is exactly the same thing as this value here. What do I mean? The y here is positive. The y here is positive. The p here is negative. The P here is negative. So you may just rewrite this one as Y minus P. So you can see all the tricks that we perform here. So to be able to escape all this, you may just make the X positive at the very beginning. So the X here was given as minus negative. So make it positive by adding X to both sides. It's not positive. So there's nothing to worry about anymore. Just take this away and you'll be fine. Now, we have used positive numbers, negative numbers, addition, subtraction. Now let's move to multiplication. When you have something like, um, say you, we are still making x a subject. Say you have 2x equals uh, p, for example. And I want to make, okay, let's not use numbers yet. Let's use alphabet. I want to make x a subject. See, the opposite of multiplication, these numbers are multiplying themselves. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So this is what I'm looking for, and lucky enough, it's a positive value, you know, because there's no minus there, so it's a positive value. So I need to remove this A, and the only way I can remove the A is to divide both sides by A, because the A is multiplying, so I divide both sides by A. So I'll have AX over A, which is equal to P over A, divide both sides by A. This A will take care of this A. So X is equal to P over A. See that? Good. Now, if I have a question like um, X over R being equal to Y. X over R being equal to Y. Now look at this. I'm looking for this x but something is dividing it the opposite of division is multiplication okay so i'll multiply both sides by the denominator which will give me r times x over r which is equal to r times y this r will cancel this r and i'll get what i'm looking for Get what I'm looking for. Okay? Now, at this point, I want to also tell you that anytime you are solving any equation and you have a fraction and equality sign, you have a fraction and equality sign, the best thing to do is to find the LCM of the denominators and multiply each of the terms by the SCM. For example, say I have, um, okay, the same X over R plus maybe I have another Y over T equals Z, for example, and I want to make X the subject. You see that this is a fraction, this is a fraction, this is just a one, an O number. Now, come to the denominator, find the LCM of this denominator which happens to be RT. 
So I multiply this by RT, RT, and RT. So I have RT into X over R plus RT into Y over T. Okay? Then RT all over everywhere. RT, RT, RT. Then you simply cut. You see that this R, we call this R. This T, we call this T. So that you can have T times X. Tx plus r times y, ry equals, and this is rtz, rtz. Now, we are looking for x. We are looking for x. Something is multiplying x, no problem. But something is added to this part. So let's take care of this part quickly. So, and this is addition. That means I'm going to remove this thing from both sides. Let's quickly remove it. We have Tx plus Ry. Remove the Ry so that you get closer to what you're looking for. Then this is Rtz. Remove the Ry. So this, I'm taking care of this. So you see that we have Tx now equal to, you can say R is common here if you like. Tz minus Y is what I have left. Now I'm very close to my x. So what I have here is exactly the same thing, similar to what I have in this place. So when something is multiplying, what you are looking for, you divide both sides by what is attached to it. So the same thing here too. So I'm going to divide both sides by t, by t. So this cancels this, and my x will now be equal to r, I can even say over t, if I want, into t, c minus y. And that's my answer. Can you see that? Now you can also decide to open these brackets so that you can cut, because the way this is, you can't cut like this because of this sign. So if you really want to cut, you need to open it and have r, t, z over t minus R, Y over T, so that this T can cancel this T. And your final answer will now be R, Z minus R, Y over T. As simple as that. So take your time and look at all we have done and try to you know, master it. Try to master it. You may need to pause your video and go over it till you master it. Let us look at this question. In this question, we are given this. So, and we are also given this formula. Number first, number one question says, express R in terms of C. Expressing R in terms of C also means make R the subject of the formula. Make R subject the formula. So from what we have in this place, you will see that this whole part, this is what I'm looking for. So every time they ask you to look for something, your focus should be on that thing. So they said two pi R. So my focus is on this because everything is multiplying R. So everything is one time here. So this is what I'm looking for. And um, you now observe what is wrong with it. 2 pi is multiplying r. 2 pi, because this means 2 times pi times r. So 2 pi is multiplying r. So how do I get my r? I will divide both sides by what is multiplying r. So I will divide both sides by 2 pi. So when I do that, I'll have c over 2 pi, which is equal to 2 pi r over 2 pi. And by doing that, this, we cancel this. So my R will now be equal to over 2 pi. And that's it. It's as simple as that. I've answered the A. Now listen to the B. Hence, write a formula with V as subject. And we are lucky V is already a subject here. Because when you're writing, making something a subject formula, no, that is stands alone. I said that they are at the beginning. Whatever you're making a subject formula must stand alone. So they said with V as subject. So V is already a subject here. V equals pi R square H. Then another said, 
eliminating R. So we need to eliminate this. So if I eliminate R, that would mean that this R that I got here, which is C over 2 pi, will replace the R. You know, they square the R, so I square it also, and I have H. So there's no more R here, because eliminate means delete, remove. And I've done that. That is actually my answer. But I want to simplify the answer, and that will not give me pi. This one here means C square H over, this one here means 2 square, which is 4. This one here means pi square. And when you do that, you discover that this one, pi, this one means pi times pi. So 1 pi, we cancel this pi. So my final answer will now be V equals C square H over 4 pi. And that is the answer. That is the answer. So, if any part is confusing, feel free to rewind the video and go over everything. Look at this number eight. Let's look at this number eight. Given this equation, make u the subject of the formula. So let's start by making u the subject of the formula. So I have d equals l m, sorry, you must follow the character given to you, small m over k plus l u square over 25. That's what I have. So I want to make u the subject. So my focus is on this u. So and this is attached to it. Before I ever come to this side, I want to take care of this guy. So you will discover that I need to subtract this because it's a positive value. I need to subtract it from both sides. So if I subtract it from both sides, it will, it will cancel out on this side. And here I will have D minus LM over K, which will now be equal to LU squared over 25. Can you see that? I want you. I know you have some things around it, but still on the same side, something is added to it. So let's take care of this part first. So I'm moving this to this side to have this, and it's equal to this. Now, looking at this, you know, I told you that when you have a fraction, at least a fraction, and you have equality sign, you find the LCM and use the LCM to multiply each of the terms. Let's do that. That would be helpful. So if I do that, so the LCM here, all over, is 25K. So this one times 25K will give me 25KD, this times this, minus this times this, will give me 25K, I'm multiplying it by this, equals, again, 25K, that's LCM, Sorry about that. 25k using the SCL, then multiplying it by the square over 25. You will pause the video and check what I have done. Please pause the video if you do not understand what I've done and go over it again. Now, let's cancel out some things. This, we cancel this one out. This 25, we cancel this 25 so that you end up having 25KD minus 25LM equals LKU square. So this is what I am looking for, U square. U square is what I'm looking for. So and if you recall that, you will see that this is standing on one side, and there is no U in any other place. So, and the U I'm looking for, something is multiplying it, which is LK. LK is multiplying my U, so I use the LK to divide each of the terms. LK, LK, LK. Or I may just divide through LK and divide through like this, LK. So I'm doing that right now. So this side, I have LK 
u square over lk, which is equal to the whole of this, which is 25. 25 is even common, so I'm bringing the 25 out. So I have kd minus l m over l k. 25 is common. I brought it out. So I factorize it out that way. So this cancels this. And I now have my u squared being equal to what I have here, 25 kd minus lm over k over lk over lk. I'm almost close. So the u I'm looking for is a positive value. And there is a square. Ah, the opposite of square is square root. So we introduce square root. Now, whenever you introduce square root, know that you are going to attach plus minus to it. So I have u right now. So I have plus minus. The whole of this will be inside the square root. And that is 25 kg minus lm, everything divided by l. Okay, I've answered the first part. Make you the subject of the formula. I just did that. So, you are free to rewind the video till you master the operation. All right, looking at the B parts, we are asked to substitute some values. You know, we want to put six wherever we have G, Put eight where you have L and put one where you have M and 18 where you have K. Let's quickly substitute that. So U is equal to plus minus square root. This is 25. Then my K is 18 times D is six minus. We have our L is eight. Then we have um, M, which is 1, all right, over, we have L, which is 8, then we are multiplying by K, which is 18. 18. So we need to solve this. Let's keep solving. This gives us 25, all right, so we may need a calculator here too solve this. So let's see what the answer will be. All right, so if you point your calculator, you will have this one to be 108 minus, this will be 8 over 144. And that will give us 25 times, this part will give you 100, and this we give you 144. And you can break this root down, you can break it down to have u to be plus minus, this one to be root 25, which is five, times root 100, which is 10, and root, um, root 144, which is 12. And that will give you plus minus 50 over 12, and that is plus minus. This is the four O number, Oh, number 2 over 12, which is also plus minus 4 number 1 over 6. And that is the solution. You just merely substitute the values into where you have the unknown and simplify your work. And that's it. If you enjoyed our teaching please click like and feel free to share our link with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can get notifications of our subsequent videos